No my hooky mai ki tēnei wā whakaaro aro. Welcome to this regular time to pause and reflect. Once again we take a break amongst exams and studying. To peacefully be. To rest and reflect. Soon we'll have a short Bible reading and then we'll be talking with Simon McClay, who's the chaplain at Iona College in Havelock North. He's going to share with us his experience of studying, of examinations and keeping balanced. But first, let's be still and calm, and hear these words. Kia ora whanau. it's Bessie here. I hope you're studying hard for your exams. I have a reading from Proverbs chapter 3 verses 1 to 6. My child, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and years of life and abundant welfare they will give you. Do not let loyalty and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will find favour and high regard in the sight of God and of people. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Well, um, hi Simon, welcome. It's lovely to uh, talk to you today and so glad you could um, share some of your thoughts and knowledge uh, with our senior students while they're on exam times. There may be some sure, people, yeah, there may be some people who know uh, who you are, but do you want to tell us where you are, what you've been doing, how long you've been doing it for, that type of thing? Certainly. Thanks, David. Um, so my name is Simon McClay. I'm now the chaplain at Iona College, which is one of our Presbyterian uh, girls colleges here in the Hawke's Bay. Uh, I've got about 320 students and for the last almost 30 years I've been a Presbyterian minister in generally in different parishes. So I was in Auckland for a while and then I was in Tauranga for 12 years oh. and I'm just yeah loving coming and being a teacher. I actually took a year out and uh, trained to be a secondary school teacher uh, and uh, now I'm the chaplain here. Yeah well that's um a bit of a giveaway to the first question I was going to ask you was about, um, well, I was going to ask you, what subject did you do at school that most lines up with what you're doing now? But of course, if you've trained to be a teacher, that <laughs> that gives it oh, a well, that's, that's, Or maybe that's... let's think back to even high school. So um, I, I loved social studies, uh, history, geography, did a degree in geography uh, when I finished school. Um, but yeah, as you're asking what, what subject was most useful, it's funny, it's kind of two, like I do a lot of talking, yeah. um, so debating in English was significant, mm. but actually, um, actually passed scholarship accounting when I was in uh, what we called seven form, yeah. and it's funny enough, as a minister, you read a lot of accounts for churches and for community groups and for, um, yeah, different organisations, for charities like that, so oh. it's kind of funny, English and accounting. That's quite good. So the ones you don't necessarily expect pop up from time to time. And did you have a favourite yeah. subject at, at school? Yeah, so I had a, a wonderful history teacher. So I always loved history. My dad loved history. So that was probably my favourite subject at school. Um, so I particularly wanted to talk to you because I think you've got a really interesting makeup. One, you've got uh, more life experience than our students do. Um, but also... Uh, just last year, you were sitting exams or assessments and had, you're also very recent to the stress of uh, yes. summative assessment. All that pressure, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Could you offer some reflections on maybe last year at Teachers College or even um, your degrees and your high schooling? What was that, what was yeah. it made life stressful or what well, do you uh, remember about exams? Yeah, it's, it was funny David because um, I'm looking at it, our girls are sitting mocks uh, mm. as I'm doing the uh, the, the recording today yeah. and they're in big halls and I remember sitting in big halls in Topo uh, uh, doing my school C exams and those sort of things mm. um, and yeah it was funny after a while um, I, I started to try to treat exams as a bit of a rush as a sense of this is a timed competition and oh. rather than have that really negative view I tried to see them as something exciting I'm not sure I ever really succeeded but I tried mm. to reframe them <laughs> for myself and then last year, going back to study, I thought, oh, going back to study, that's fine. And then I realized it had been a long time mm. since I had done assignments and learning to do footnoting and all those sort of things. Oh, so, yeah. yeah, just learning to manage the pressure. Fortunately, I didn't have any um, real exams. They were all internals last year. Yeah. Uh, 
but in a sense, every time you stand up in front of a classroom, it's an exam. And as you students will know, you, you soon know whether whether we know what we're talking about or not. <laughs> yeah, very true, very true. Um, you mentioned the the stress or the pressure around assignments. Um, even last yeah. year, but mm. did you have any kind of rituals or things you did to help you manage that pressure stress? Yeah, so my dad, um, my dad was the first in his family to get a university degree. Actually, yeah. it was funny. His father had five days formal schooling in his life. Yeah. So this kind of transition. And dad always said, you've got to balance recreation with study. So he he always encouraged us to go to a movie the night before exams and just try to relax a bit. Yeah. Um, I, I I love to get outside when I'm studying and just be in the, in the fresh air. Mm. Uh, and yeah, vary it. Um, do some reading. Do some listening to something. Do the hard things like consider practice questions. What would yeah. I find difficult? So think about a question I think would be difficult and make myself answer it. Sort of that balance between the real hard stuff yeah. and also some recreation and, and getting out in the way of it. So it sounds like sometimes you need to put your nose to the grindstone and just revise. Sometimes you need to take the pressure right off. And sometimes you almost need, you're almost with that question asking yourself a hard question it sounds like sometimes you just need to actually be a little bit creative and let your mind um play with what you've been learning yeah I, I remember reading something at one stage that says you know your your subconscious is great at working through things so you just got to fill it up with ideas mm -hmm. and then sometimes have a bit of a pause and let it do something else and you now i love uh, mountain biking or cycling and mm -hmm. so getting out my bike for a few hours uh can be great yeah when you're not doing assessments <laughs> or sitting things and stressed out yourself. Um, do you have a regular rhythm to rest and reflect? I'm just wondering what are some of the things you do regularly uh, that maybe our students could pick up on and may want to incorporate. In yeah, so I think that that physical exercise thing is is part of what's really healthy. So I um I cycle into work here most days. Yeah. Uh, it's only a short ride, but it's a ride here and it's a ride back, and that just gets uh, the blood flowing a bit. Mm like going for for walks love to get out in the mountains uh and go tramping but that's probably less often and yeah, yeah sometimes getting out for a swim or a paddle just just those sort of um, patterns of a bit of physical activity not necessarily hugely strenuous but just yeah. out uh, outside for a bit that's what i find refreshing so here's the thing i think sometimes when i'm stressed I, I want to do those things and I want to procrastinate with other stuff and maybe I forget about the things I have to do. So how do you strike the right balance between, you know, doing what you what you have to do and what kind of recharges you? Yeah, so it's interesting um, because I was thinking about that recently and thinking about uh, right back when I was 15, actually, and some mm -hmm. of my mates and the conversations we had. And I had friends who said, oh, I study eight, 10 hours a day, I could never do that. No. Other friends who did two hours a day and went, oh, it's probably a bit little. So for me, it was figuring out what my pattern was. And yeah. I'm probably a five to six hour a day sort of person. And I'll mark it almost religiously. And, and But once I'm finished it, it's like I'm finished. I can go read a book, I can do something else. Um, I'll balance it. And so I find timetabling for me works mm. is just saying, you know, and, and you know, getting the pretty colored pens out and writing on my calendar I'm going to do an hour of English and 45 minutes in I'll be thinking about what I'm going to do afterwards but uh yeah, yeah so for me it's just rostering and rotating maybe having uh relatively short periods of intense work oh yeah That's so all, you're almost like booking a meeting like yeah exactly this is when I'm yeah. meeting with my English study this is when I'm mm. this. yeah yeah, and then not feeling guilty because if I set the bar reasonably low and it's something like six hours, yeah. and I know many of you might think that's not a low bar, but really, really not feeling guilty afterwards because often you can get that done by three or four in the afternoon and, yeah, and then just yeah. be free. Almost like keeping your your normal school routine in some way. Yeah, a little bit like that. My, my oldest son was at home a couple of years ago for lockdown and yeah. he'd drag us out at lunchtime with a rugby ball and we'd throw it around and... Uh, he was quite good at those sort of, you know, just get out, be with some other people, kick a ball around, throw it around, uh, mm -hmm. play a bit of cricket. And that, that was always good. But not, yeah, and then he was also good at getting back and saying, right, got to go and study now. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, well, that's that's quite good, yeah, because the plan with these interviews is to release them uh, when uh, each week when our students would be in chapel. Um, 
mm. keeping that regular yeah. rhythm, you know. Um, so mm. I can look at the clock and go, oh, it's normally chapel time. Uh, I'll, yeah. I'll jump on and have a listen. Um, mm. Keep my regular kind of break thing going on. That's awesome. Do you have any other words of wisdom that you think um, students sitting final exams would benefit from? No, no, I do. I, I've been thinking about that for my study classes recently mm. and thinking, I just really want to encourage students that you know more than you think you do, mm. that we all start exams with a panic and go, oh my goodness, I remember it was an Old Testament exam about level two years ago that I went into, I looked at the questions and I went, I have no idea mm. about this. So I took some deep breaths and decided, okay, I've, I've got to write what I do know, not what I don't know. Yeah, uh, And I... I won't say guess, I extrapolated. I, yep. I took what I knew and extended it. Um, and I actually ended up getting a really good mark for that exam. Mm. And so it's always said, you know, often examiners are looking for what you do know. So do the best with what you can. I, I think one of the teachers I worked with last year had this lovely way of saying, you know, everyone goes into an exam and somewhere along the way there's a panic mode. And they said, after you've panicked, mm -hmm. and then you start having a look <laughs> Yeah, this is what, yeah. and then he had Hamilton mnemonics and that sort of thing that helped him. Got it. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, you sit down at an exam, it's okay to freak out, <laughs> but then exactly. trust what you yeah. do know. Yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah. And and the age old comment is do read the question really carefully. Even mm -hmm. when I'm marking things, you can see people who have written what they want to, but haven't actually, haven't actually read the question. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Kind of circles back to your comment before where I, you know, when I said about you need to let your brain be a little bit creative from time to time. Um, because who knows, an exam might throw you something where you have to be creative, like you have. That's right. Yeah. 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 Well, it's fantastic. It's been great talking to you and um hearing your your thoughts, your advice. Can I ask one last favor? Could you um offer a prayer for our students who are sitting in exams at the moment? Certainly. I'd love Thank to you. do that, though. Okay, so uh in Oitato, uh students, good. So loving God, we pray for uh, these students that they might have your peace in their hearts, that they might quieten their pulse and be ready uh, for their exams. Lord, I pray for clarity in their thinking, that they can organise their thoughts as they uh, head into exams. And Lord, we always ask for a bit of supernatural revelation. Give us some answers to the questions that we really want to know and help us through. In Jesus' name, Amen. Exams continue next week, and so let's join together and pray. In the night, that day, let the Ariki, the Atua, or the Aroha be with all who sit exams. May they know your support and guidance. We especially pray for those who are sitting exams in physics, German, geography, English, economics, earth science, drama, classics chemistry and biology. May we know that you care for us all, support us and guide us. O mato aroha me te rangi māori e. Āmini. Ki a tau, ki a tātou katoa, te atawhai o tō tātou āri ki a ihu karaiti, me te aroha o te atoa, me te whiwhinga tahitanga ki te wairua tapu. I runga i a tātou katoa. Āke, āke, āke. Āmini.